back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about them. Hi guys, so it is time at last. I know so many of you guys have asked me to bring back cover chat, make it more regular. I don't have a lot of time to do cover chat videos. They are my most requested video, but they're also my most difficult to plan out and difficult to film because they take a very very long time. It's also a very very hard edit whenever I have to film one because they have so much detail into them that I don't want to get wrong and I want to make sure it's all good and perfect for you guys. I'm going to film three cover chat videos at once and you're going to see this one and then the next two over the next few weeks. So if I'm in the same outfit and I'm at home even though I'm now back at uni that's why. This is one that I have been requested a lot since I started reading the Wheel of Time series. People have requested me to do this in different ways, so my plan is that I'm going to take two books from the Wheel of Time. In this video it will be the first, which is The Eye of the World, and the second one, which is The Great Hunt, and I'm going to talk about various different covers for each of them, some that are UK and US published, and then some that are from different countries. And we're just going to talk about which ones we like, which ones we don't. I would love you guys to light up the comments with your suggestions and your thoughts on which covers you guys like. So if you disagree with what I say, definitely let me know, or if you agree, definitely let me know. So if you don't already know, The Wheel of Time is an epic series of 14 books with one prequel as well called New Spring, and the 14 books are supposedly one adventure. They basically follow a group of different people. The first book specifically focuses on Rand Al Thor, who is our main character throughout the entire series. We really get to see a massive growth and development of these characters over the course of the 14 books. They live in a fantastical world where there are good guys and bad guys who both have fantastical elements to them. Basically it's just the story of how Rand Al Thor and few of his friends from his village basically get involved in this massive worldwide epic quest and adventure where they come across various different cultures, they come across various different types of people, types of magic, all sorts of things go on and it's really fantastic in scope. I'm going to just specifically talk about the first two books in this series and it won't be spoilery, I'm not going to do any spoilers on the series so don't worry about that. Basically Robert Jordan published the first 11 books under his own name and then the last three books in the series were actually completed by Brandon Sanderson after Robert Jordan's death because Jordan wanted someone else to finish up the series and his wife worked closely with Sanderson to ensure that his desires and his notes were taken into account when finishing up the series. I at the moment have read book 10 and I'm up to book 11, I'm going to be starting it soon and I'm loving this series. I have given the first few 5 out of 5 stars and then there are a few that I've given 4 out of 5, one that I've given 3, I think all the others I've given 4 and 5 out of 5 stars so I really really do enjoy this series and I would highly recommend it even if you don't think it's for you, give it a try. If you don't like the first book you're probably not going to like the rest of the series but if you do like the first book I don't doubt that you probably will enjoy the rest of the series. Let's get into the covers. The first edition of The Eye of the World was published by Tor and the art artwork for all of the Wheel of Times that are painted in this style is actually done by Daryl Sweet who unfortunately also died before he could complete the final cover for the Wheel of Time but he did manage to complete all 13 leading up to that and he did a sketch of the 14th which was then followed through by another artist called Michael Wheaton. The first cover that I'm going to show you guys is the original cover. This was published in 1990 by Tor. It has 800 pages and it is a mass market paperback. This cover, as you guys can see, is very kind of 90s in feel. It has that heavily illustrated and painted style to it, which I think is really interesting to look at in detail, but doesn't strike me as the most exciting image from far away. So I think it has pros and cons because I don't think this style has aged particularly well. I know there are people out there who admire this drastically and they really love this illustration style. I'm not one of those people unfortunately. I love the fact that it's got bold colours and it's bright but I don't like the typography itself. On the original cover you only get the front of this book but actually it's a wraparound and on the versions that I have which you'll see later on you get the other side of this cover. So I'm going to show you guys the full artwork. I think it looks nicer as an image 
rather than part of a typographic and image-based cover. I don't love the combination of type on top of the image. The image itself is really quite amusing because it's of a knight on a horse. Then we've got a younger lady. I'm assuming she's an Aes Sedai, who is one of the main characters, one of the sort of wizardy characters within this story. They have magic and they're quite sophisticated, regal young women, and I definitely feel like she is one of the Aes Sedai because she's wearing white and that's very very similar to how I imagine her in the books and how she's described in the books. I know that Robert Jordan's wife was very very happy with the illustrations that Sweet provided and I do think that there is a sort of charm to them, a sort of inviting charm to them but I just feel like because it just has that dated feeling and I think that more comes from the typography than it does from the actual image. So for me the typography lets this one down and I'm not a fan of the typography generally on any of the books in this publication series. I do think that the image is really stunning when you look deeper into it and there are things that you can pick up on that definitely do relate back to the story so that's really really cool and I love seeing that and I love being able to pick those things out. I definitely think that Sweet is a really good illustrator, let's put it that way. I just don't like the combination of illustration and typography because I think the typography is so simplistic and it doesn't really do justice to the extraordinary artwork that's going on, which is a bit of a shame. So for me, would I buy this cover? Probably not. I don't really like the style of it as a whole, but I do like the artwork, so I would probably buy the artwork as an individual artwork. I think they look really nice and they would probably look nice as posters or postcards or whatever. So I do like the art, I just don't like it as part of the cover. Now moving on, as you guys can see, this is my very very battered old copy of The Eye of the World. But I just wanted to show you guys that on the back there is a little strip just here, which is part of the original illustration by Daryl K. Sweet. So. This cover, even though it's very, very simplistic, it does actually hark back to the original and it has a snippet of his work on the back as well, which I think is really interesting and I do like that little sliver that we have on each of the books. So the next cover that we have is actually a very, very different one in design. It has the three rings on the front cover and this one was published in 2006 by Orbit and this one has 800 pages as well and is also a mass market paperback. This one, the cover illustration of all the ones in this series, is done by Lee Gibbons and the back cover is done by Daryl K. Sweet. This is the edition that I have, this is the edition I have been collecting. I really like these editions, I know they're very very simplistic in design and I think that's why they appeal to me because they look very uniform when they're on my shelf and I really enjoy looking at them on my shelf. I think it's really really lovely in that it's very black at the back and then there's just this really popping bright colour and on all of the books it's different the colour. The typography is the same across all of the books in the series and I really like that and it looks really good on your shelf but the fact that they have different bright colours and they are very bright a lot of them, they're very vibrant which is exciting because considering this was published a long time ago now I love the fact that they're republished in this brighter, more simplistic but stylish design in my opinion. So would I buy this book? Definitely. I do own the whole series in this edition up to book 11 and I will be getting 12, 13 and 14 in this edition as well. We have another one which has an artistic design on it and this is actually the ebook version. This was published in 2009 by Tor and it's the Kindle version or the ebook version and it has 753 pages. And the art on this one is actually different for each book. The art on this one specifically is done by David Gore and I have to say I'm not a fan of this artwork. I do like the style of the book. I do like the little band that we have across the middle. I think that's very stylish. I think that really pops out and it's a nice colour. I like the fact that we've got the three rings in a little circle and we've got the second heading underneath saying the name of the series. Then we've got the title of the author's name. All of this is in a kind of serif font which I think works really well. So I love the style of this. I think it has a very nice feeling to it and it would look very uniform on the shelf and be very nice to look at. But again, I just feel like the illustration style is a bit dated. It's not really as exciting as the other one. At least the original printing had some very cool touches that linked with the story. This one is a guy hanging off of a ship, but I don't think that it's a major part of the story, which is why I'm a little bit confused over why they chose that moment specifically. I think the illustration is good, I think it's realistic, I just don't like the fact that he's made out to look like this really wonderful sailor when I know that the main character definitely isn't that because he comes from a small village, he's not really been on any boats before. It's an interesting concept and I definitely think it's an interesting way of portraying the story because it doesn't give away lots of the fantastical stuff that goes on and I think there could have been more done with this, I think it could have been developed further 
and that probably would have made it a more interesting image if there was some more subtlety going on or there were some more hints at different things from the story. I think that would have really boosted it up in my opinion. Then we have another version of the same artwork on a different publication. So the first one was the Kindle. This is actually a paperback version of the same book. This was bought out in 2012 by Tor and this is the paperback and it has 752 pages. This one, as I say, the artwork is exactly the same. It's just been shrunk down into a smaller box and we have this very, very nice colourful background that pops and is different on each of the editions. So the first one has a red background, which I really like. I think it's very nice colour. I think that the typography, again, very nicely balanced, very nice placement of typography. The image just doesn't work for me. The image is definitely the thing that lets this down. So would I buy this one or the last one? No, just because I don't like that image and I don't think it gives justice to the story, which I feel like has so much more depth than a guy hanging off of a rigging. So I just didn't love that one as much, but I do love the style of the overall cover. I think it's really lovely balance and harmony between the text and the image. I just don't like the image. So I wouldn't buy the last two, but I do think if the image was nicer, I would. So let me know your thoughts on that one, definitely. Then we have a limited edition hardback book, which was bought out especially by Orbit in 2011. This is a very, very simplistic design. It's very similar to the one I own, and it focuses on the three rings. The three rings, as you will come to understand, are a symbol for the Aes Sedai in the book, who are a major part of the story. So it definitely links back to the story and makes a lot of sense. I love the fact that it is just gold foil blocking and slightly embossed which is really really nice. It's very simplistic. It has a nice case that you can put it in. It looks gorgeous. I would love those editions. I just can't find them because obviously they're limited edition and that's a shame because I would have loved them but I'm sure they were very expensive at the time but I do really like them and I think they just have a really elegant simplistic design to them. They're all gold, none of them have a different colour but I think they just look really nice and if there was a whole collection of these for sale and I could find them somewhere and they were a bit cheaper than I imagine they are I would probably buy them, yes. Next we have the newest editions of the Wheel of Time series which actually came out in 2014 so this came out last year and I have to say these are probably one of my favourite editions. If I hadn't already started collecting them in the other edition I probably would have got these ones so I do really like it. And this was published in 2014 by Orbit. It has 816 pages and they are published in paperback only. I really do like this cover. I think these covers are just very very pretty and they have a really nice light feeling to them, a light and airy feeling to them, whereas the dark black of the backgrounds that I have is a lot heavier and it feels a lot darker. These ones have a more light and more airy and fun feeling which I like. I also like the fact that in the background we have the faded in version of the rings, that's really important and that's really nice that they've included it. And I just think that the kind of sepia look looks really really nice, I love that colour anyway and I think they've done it really well with a pop of red on the front. So I really do like these covers, I love the typography as well, I think it's very elegant, it's quite tall, it's quite squished together, which I think makes it look very very stylish and very sophisticated and that's something that I do love in designs that are simple or don't have a photo or illustrative stuff. I think it's nice to have a very simple design. Would I buy these ones? Definitely, I think they're really nice, but I already have them in the other edition so I won't be buying them, but I do really like them and I think they're very very pretty designs. Then we move on to some of the covers from around the world that are not published in English and these ones are where it starts to get a little bit exciting because they could be either really good or really bad and we'll never know until we look. So these are the ones you may not have seen before. The first one I'm going to talk about is published in 2006 by Fanucci and this is 735 pages and it's a paperback and it's Italian. So this one I think is very very interesting because we have this blue banner which I think is a nice thing. I think having banners always makes your typography look quite nice and it stands out more as opposed to just layering it on top of the image which they did on the original and I didn't love as much. Still I'm not a fan of the colour of this banner. This banner might be their logo, I'm not sure. It's definitely got a small image that could be their logo on the red. It would have been nicer if it was more similar to the houses on there. I think either the white of the horse or the kind of greyish red of the houses would have been a nicer colour tone to pick out and have as the background so that it just blended in a little bit more rather than feeling more disjointed. I do like the style of illustration on this one. I think it's more realistic. There's less heavy brushwork going on. It's quite pastel-y in colour which I like and I think that's just personal preference. I do prefer this style of illustration personally. I think the houses as well are quite an interesting interpretation. They kind of remind me of fantastical 
things straight away just because of all the things they've got sticking out of them and like wizard's towers. I don't know where it's meant to be at the point of the story when they're riding through. I don't know if it's meant to be the village of Emmonsfield where they all come from in the very very start of the book or if it's meant to be somewhere else. It doesn't look like a village to me but maybe who knows, it's all open to interpretation when you're reading, of course. The blend of the artwork and the text all together looks a little bit more thought about, a little bit more considered on this one. So even though I don't love the typography, I don't think the typography is that original or anything like that. Robert Jordan's name is very basic and then the title is even more basic and very very small so it's obviously a selling point through his name rather than the title. I think that the sky and the houses themselves with the horses and the characters is a really nice image to have chosen and I think that definitely tells more of the story than the second illustrated one did. I don't love that one but this one tells a lot more of the story and gives you more hints at the story which I think is really nice. So would I buy this one? Potentially yes, I think it has some really nice qualities, I just don't like the colour of that banner. Then we come to a cover which I have to say I really like but I don't understand its reference to the Wheel of Time specifically. This is the Portuguese cover and it was published in 2007 by Bertrand. This one has 812 pages. I really like this cover, I think it's very kind of interesting, it has some really nice pops of the pinks. Pink and orange is an interesting combination, it can either work or it doesn't work because they're clashing colours and I think on this one it definitely works. We've got a sight of sun in the middle and then behind it we've got this slight ring of orange and then these massive dramatic swirls. I think as a composition and an image it works really well. Cross between real and imagined and I like that. As a reference to the Wheel of Time it's a little bit odd. I don't know if they're trying to reference the wheel itself possibly. I don't really know how it ties in fantastically well but I do think the colours are really nice and as an image I think it's really interesting. I do like the colours they've used on the title, I think they work really really well with the image, that's one of the things I look for on a cover is how well the typography and the image works together and I think these ones definitely do. Would I buy this one? I don't know because I think I would get the wrong idea, I think I would think this was a sci-fi book as opposed to a fantasy. It definitely has a more clean, slick, fantastical meets sci-fi feel rather than true hardcore fantasy which The Wheel of Time is. I don't know if I would buy it or not, I do like it but I don't know if I would buy it just based off of the fact that I don't think I would pick it up thinking it was a fantasy, I think I would pick it up thinking it was a sci-fi and then be a bit disappointed when it turned out to be a fantasy so who knows. Then we have a cover which is another Portuguese one but this one is actually Brazilian Portuguese and this one is published by Intrinsica. This one was published in 2013 and it's paperback and has 800 pages. This one I do really like, again it's quite simple and quite similar to the editions that I have and I really like the fact that they've kept the theme of the three rings with the snake and that's really cool. I love the fact that you can see it and it feels more like a brooch or something like that as opposed to the images I have on my editions which are flat. This one appears to be 3D, it appears to be some sort of object that you could pin onto you or something like that and I think that's actually nice, I do like the fact that they've got a kind of metallic gleam to it. The typography, again they've used the colours that are on the image which I think works really really well as a kind of ongoing thing to note in your head, always take colours from the image, try and blend colours together that work and they definitely have done that with the title. They've actually used a very simplistic design, it is a serif text still but a lot of the letters don't have a lot of serif on them and it's not overly fancy so it just looks quite modern and sleek even though it does use a serif type which is great. Then we have a cover which made me laugh when I found it and I really like this cover but I don't imagine it as part of the Wheel of Time so it's a very interesting choice. This one is the Indonesian cover. This one was published in 2010 by Penabit Mizan Fantasi. It's a paperback with 900 pages. This cover is really oriental in design. It definitely has a much more Chinese, Japanese, oriental feeling to it than it does a fantastical medieval world which is what the Wheel of Time essentially is. I like it, I like the fact that they've gone with a really orange fiery tone, I like the fact that they have a little banner across the top that says Wheel of Time, I think that looks really really classy and I like the fact that it's kind of got dragony swirly things coming out of it, I think it looks really cool. I don't think it fits the series. The face behind, I originally thought that was the sun, I didn't even see a face to begin with but there is a big massive face looming down looking over them, I'm guessing that's meant to be the dark one who is a pretty bad character as you might guess from his name. Quite a scary image, I definitely can see where they would interpret that and put that onto the cover. Then we've got three main characters who are kind of standing staring straight at
it out at us and I think that's interesting because I don't think the characters at this point of the story would be that dominant and that sure of themselves. In the first book they're definitely getting to know each other, getting to understand their destiny, getting to know where they're going and what they're going to do. They don't really know a lot about what's going on so I don't feel like they would be standing there all authoritative and staring out at us. But again, it's everyone's own interpretation and this is clearly the way that Indonesia sees the Wheel of Time, which I think is really, really awesome and very different to how I see it, but very, very cool in its own way. Would I buy this one? Probably not, just because it doesn't really suit the Wheel of Time in my opinion, but as a cover and a whole, I think it has some really cool elemental designs and very, very cool oriental feeling to it, which is awesome just not appropriate for the Wheel of Time, in my opinion. And the final one in The Eye of the World, which is the first book that I'm going to be talking to you guys about, is the Spanish edition. This one was published in 1990 and it's published by Timon Mas and it's a hardback with 640 pages. This one is an interesting one because it has a knight sort of running through the frame and it's kind of chopped off at his legs, which is quite interesting. Behind him, we see some houses. Again, I'm guessing this is meant to be a reference to Emmons Field, which is the village where they come from, but potentially it could be any of the towns that they pass along the way, I'm not sure. Also, in terms of the knight, I'm guessing it's Lan, who is a major character that we meet early on, but I'm not sure and I don't know for certain. I think the fact that he's got all these swords and things definitely makes me believe it would be him, because I can't imagine any of the other characters are looking like this. But I think it's a very, very dynamic image. The fact that we have a character running out of shot is very, very nice. We have this kind of fiery background behind it. The houses have more of a village feeling to them than the other cover with houses. Less fantasy, more realistic. Definitely get a dynamic feel from this, and I think that's a nice touch. I don't love the type on this one. I think that the title on this one just doesn't really work for me. I think it could have been a lot better. I think they should have picked up on the white more from the Robert Jordan than the grey of the Knight of Armour because I feel like the grey really blends into the background and I feel if they had used a white or a more light grey than dark grey it really would have shown up a lot better. And seeing as the title is rather key to drawing people into your story, it needs to be able to be seen. And this one, unfortunately, doesn't do it enough justice and doesn't show it off to its full potential, which is a bit of a shame. But I definitely still think the illustration is not for me. I don't like the illustration as a whole, but it is an interesting image to look at and analyse. Would I buy this one? Probably not. I don't think it's really <laughs> my cup of tea, but I do think it's an interesting image to look at. And it's definitely a good interpretation in some ways of the Wheel of Time so I can understand what they're depicting, which I like being able to do. So those are all of the Eye of the World, the first book in the series that I'm going to be talking to you guys about today. Let me know which of those ones is your favourite, which one would you collect if you were going to buy the editions or if you already own them, which ones do you own? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree? Definitely just let me know all of your thoughts on them. Me and you gonna have a little 